It's another Sunday in the month of May. Welcome to Ashon in Progress, a weekly program that showcases activities and achievements of Governor Buyiga Oyetola in the state of the virtuous. The 2.7 billion era Olaya flyover project was flagged off by the Governor Buyiga Oyetola about three months ago, and since then, work has commenced. How far has the contractor gone? Will the project be executed within the stipulated time frame? Shortly, we'll be speaking with the contractor handling the project Adeliki Olariwaju. My name is Rafiu Hamid. But before then, let's look at the activities of the state government for the week. The food support scheme of the state government for the month of May was flagged off about 10 days ago by Secretary to the state government, Prince Wali Uyibamiji. On Saturday 8th of May, representatives of the beneficiaries were invited to take delivery of the food items on behalf of their people. The food items were distributed to both the indigents and non-indigents residing in the state. They are appreciative of the initiative of the governor, Buyiga Uyetola. This is, let's say, this is first time in history when I did in this state, since when they started this democracy. There's no any governor that did what this man have done. Because how surprising that every month this man are feeding masses. So he doesn't select whether you are a Fulani or you are Igbo or this and that. All the tribes. There is nothing someone can do that can satisfy everyone. But we people with disability we really appreciate it. At least at least um, it cover some part of our living. On Tuesday, the civic engagement program of the state government was held in Ikiri, in Iriwale local government area of Ocean State. Some stakeholders of the All Progressives Congress in the state, including the State Commissioner for Finance, Bola Uyibamiji, and the Chairman of the State Universal Basic Education, Ajibola Famuriwa, were in attendance. As usual, participants made their request from the government, which the special advisor to the governor on civic engagement promised to take to the governor. Yeah, what people should be expecting uh, with this type of program is one, their needs should be met because they tell the governor what they want. The government will not be thinking of this is what we want to do for them. The government will be able to identify that this is the major problem of the citizen. And by the time the government identify that, the government will now provide the news, like the definition of democracy. Democracy is dependent on the people, by the people, and for the people. And as long as we govern the people, we must be able to identify their needs so that the citizens' need must be a priority. The serious as a serious government. The serious as a government that is accessible. The serious as a government that is taking the policy and programs of, the, of this administration to the grassroots, to the doorstep of the people. We made people to be part of this government. We made them as a stakeholder. We run government together. So they see it as their government. And we all see it as our government. And all at their request, uh, the government have been doing with the ambit of the with the, with the, with the, with the resources, although we have a scarce, limited resources in the state of Osho, but within that resources, the government has been doing well, the government has been doing well in order to satisfy our people. Also on Wednesday, Osho State branch of the Nigerian Chamber of Commerce was inaugurated. The Director General of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce, Shola Obadimu, said at the inauguration that the effort is to improve small and medium scale enterprises in the state. The state of Osho, incidentally, is a very unique state uh, within the body polity of Nigeria. As I said before, we already have eight chapters of the chamber across Nigeria. And within the southwest, we have Ogun State. Uh, your state, and this will be the third one, apart from national headquarters in Lagos. The, you know, Osho State, what I'm saying is unique is it has a blend of everything. A Greek, 
uh, significant agri activity than the mining sector that we cannot deny that is prevalent here. And then, of course, commercial activities within the state, you know, the, the uh, activities of the, even the judges of old. So it is very critical for a state like this to key into uh, the uh, export potentials of this country uh, because of these activities so that people that are outside this country, the Americans in this case, can realize the benefits of products and services that are coming from a state like this. to be as continued to be in the state of Oshun. And we thank God for that. The, the purpose of having a good governance is for people to allow that governance to prevail and to continue. One, the, it's the expectation of government that our people will be able to pay their taxes promptly and respond to request uh, financial obligations that they have towards government. On Thursday, Muslims in the state observed the two rakat prayers marking the end of Ramadan at different praying grounds across the state. At the Central Eid in Oshobo, the state capital, the two rakat prayers was led by the chief imam of Oshobo land, Alaji Musa Animashaun. The governor was represented by the commissioner for finance, Bola Uyebamiji. Bola Uyebamiji encouraged Muslim faithful to let the lessons learned throughout the month of Ramadan reflect in their lives. The significance of Ramadan is very important. 
and he wants the people of the state of Oshun to continue with a good conduct, with prayer, with share of love and kindness, so that at the end we will have the cause to glorify the Holy Name and we will be able to pray for peace, tranquility, development of Nigeria, in particular the state of Washington. Yes, the issue of COVID-19, the governor emphasized that COVID-19 is still available around us. That is important that we observe the protocol of COVID-19. It is important for us to recognize that earth is worth. So very important for us to continue with the protocol. Uh, we are not uh, going to tolerate any act of uh, lawlessness, crime and criminalities in this uh, place. So they should either change their mind, I mean they should repent or move out of the state completely. Otherwise it will be, it will be very tough for them this time around. The Olaya flyover is one of the major projects of the present administration in Oshun State. The governor conceived the idea to reduce accidents and ease movement of vehicles. The contract was awarded at a cost of 2.7 billion naira and is expected to be completed in nine months. But there have been speculations that not much work had been done on the project and that the project may not be delivered to time. The contractor handling the project Adeleke Olariwaju speaks on what has been done so far. It's basically a flyover that is spanning three, 675 meters in total. The suspended area is 60 meters. And uh, in bridge construction of that nature, you have the substructural element and the precast element. Now, what we are doing is to work on the substructure, which we call the foundation and at the same time simultaneously to handle the precast element, the beams and the support slabs. If you visit that site now, the precast element is 100% completed and on this
nature in different parts of the country with an assurance that a quality job will be delivered. There are regulatory procedures. For example, for you to use your reinforcement, you have to ensure that they pass through the necessary lab laboratory tests. The reinforcements were tested. We were in the University of Lagos, Lagos State Material Testing Center, then uh, Oshun State University. Then we have the manufacturer certificate. What you actually need for reinforcement of that nature is just two levels of certification, but we got four. Then for concrete works, every stage of the concrete work, we've gone through all the tests that is required. The other day, we had a pilot test. Uh, so the, the concrete works, I call it tested. So the quality is the best you can get anywhere in the world. So you can be sure. And you know that uh, ordinarily for a project of this nature, what you require is just two levels of uh, supervision. But we have three. There is the means of works is there. There is the consultant that is appointed by Minister of then there is external consultant. So the our organization itself is even self-consulting. In our in-house, we have in-house people that check our work. So there are different levels of checks that have been put in place. And until you are able to pass a particular level, you don't move to the next stage. So you can be sure that when the test is done, you wait for the results. And when the results are there, you will be given clearance to proceed. So for every stage of work that you see there have been certified by the necessary professionals on ground in and off site. So the quality that you have there is the best you can get anyway. And if you go to that site, all the materials that are needed to finish that project are already on ground, practically on ground. All the materials that are needed are practically on ground. So the issue of funding is not there. The issue of fundation, fundation in terms of prices is not there. So we're just praying to God to give us uh, uh, time, opportunity. Construction work is not on social media. Construction work, we don't come so much to this. Uh, before now, this is my 25 years of practice. And this company has been in existence for over 17 years. We started with Peculiar Consort in 2004. Peculiar Print Concerns Limited in 2008, and we will be working in Niger Delta area. If you look at our profile, probably you've gone through them. You see that we've done a lot of work in Delta State, uh, those states. And to be specific, let me just be before now, we have two bridges in Aqua Ibon that we have done over the river. It's not even uh, over the river, over the river, and much longer than this. In the Nuka government, you see the first one, which has a total span of over one kilometer. The suspended area is 150 meters. Then, between the boundary of uh, Aqua Ibo and uh, Abia State, there's a town called Arochuku. You have a short span break that we did, it's over water too. Then, if you go to your state, there is what is called Omi Bridge, which is ongoing now. On Ajia Road, Ajia new uh, uh, towards uh, airport. There's only a bridge there. If you equally go to Ojuri Bashon, you get there now. You see our project ongoing. And if I want to narrow it down to bridge works, you see the bridge component there. As we speak now, the pair, the pairs are up. The institute beam have been. Preparing them to cast. Then our precast or longitudinal beams are already on ground. So we are not new to construction work. We are one of the best you can get within the Nigerian space. We have a reputation, I'm a civil engineer, I'm currently registered. We have a reputation of combining speed, finance, and quality, which is very rare. We have projects that are that are the first in Africa. That are the first. If you look at the closing speech of the governor of Edo State, he was talking about facility that we provided. And engineering wise, that facility that combines the gyms and the non tennis court, considering the span that we had, there's no, no company that has brought that. Problem. We designed 
and build that. So we are not new to construction, but so you know, construction work is not advertised on social media. So, so what some persons wanted us to do was they wanted to come on Facebook. You can come on Facebook this time. Your, the, the platform which you want to advertise a program per product is going to be determined by the type of product we are selling. So for those of our clients, we are getting to the people that want to buy our products. Uh, so that is why, as we speak now, we are working in six days of the Federation. So if some person says, uh, I don't know of any indigenous company in Nigeria that is doing as much volume as we are doing presently, there is no, if you have, if you, if you know it, just tell me. You know we are with during COVID, even here in Ocean, between February and November, we delivered 54 kilometers of road, which have, some of them have been commissioned. They are 100% completed. So for somebody to be asking where have we worked before, is to say that probably the person doesn't live in Ocean State. Because if you live in Ocean State, probably you will have gone to Aliko, you will have seen what we did there. You'll probably you'll have gone to Ede Ejibu Ara and you have seen the 22 kilometer road. Probably you'll have been in Moro Ife Ashiba. You'll have seen about uh, 10 points, one kilometer road. Probably you'll have been to Ibajo. That road has been abandoned for over 20 years. 13.1 kilometer of road. That's a hilly place there that looks insurmountable. That you can only conquer if you have the grace and the technology. So for us, what we are doing is at international level. And you know, not only are we doing bridges, construction, we are into sports. As I mentioned earlier to you, uh, development of uh, stadia. If you go to Ideobuna, we are building sports academy there. It's not football academy, it's sports academy. So for people that don't know, they might not, they might not know us because they are not into that business. If I ask you now, how many for you to name company that produce aircraft, probably you won't know. Uh, I need for sure state is to hire somebody that will do aircraft now, uh, yeah, aircraft uh, manufacturing, and they mention a name, you say it's not a household name. So, uh, so they are not into that business, they will not know. For those that are into construction, they, they wouldn't say we are not there. In fact, I let me say with all sense of humility that we are the best in the country for now. It is the expectation of residents that the project will be completed to time. That's our package for today. Join us next Sunday, same time, for another edition of Washington in Progress. On behalf of the coordinator, who doubles as State Commissioner for Information and Civic Orientation, Funke Egbemande, and the entire production crew, my name is Rafi Hamid Sain. Do have a great week ahead. Thank you.